Good morning. Welcome to church. Happy Sunday. Can you welcome to church? Welcome someone to church this morning. Just welcome someone to church. Sarah, you're welcome. I'm happy to see you. You're not doing as if you don't know who I'm calling. Sarah, I'm happy to see you. Ah, uh, comfort. I'm happy to see you. David, Daniel. Okay, Daniel, my Daniel. Daniel, I'm happy to see you. My name is Daniel too. I'm happy to see you. God bless you. It's always a privilege to be in the presence of God. I'm happy to see David, my friend, and my brother, La Sisi David. It's you I'm talking about. Don't look down. Our, our, our runaway soldier. A way without official leave. He just goes, he comes and goes. He comes one day or two days and goes for six months. <laughs> it's good to have you guys around. God bless you all. Guys, don't be afraid in life. Don't be afraid. Are you catching cold? Don't be afraid. You have to be confident of life, okay? That you are a child of God is everything. Do you understand? That you are what? A child of God is what? Is everything. Imagine Dangote's child. He wakes up and is afraid that, hey, what will I eat this morning? What will I eat today? Can you imagine that? Sarah, Dangote's child wakes up and is crying and is afraid. Hey, which food will I eat today? What will I eat today? Is it possible? So how come Dangote's child has more confidence than you, a child of God? Do you understand? You have to wake up to the realization of who you are. You are a child of God. Can you say I'm a child of God? I pray that the realize, reality of these things dawns upon our heart. What it means to be a child of God. When you know what it means to be a child of God, your life is peaceful. You are at, you're at ease. Your life is just... You understand? I, I don't mean that you won't go through problems. I don't mean that there won't be difficulties. But you, but you can, even in the midst of storms, you can take a pillow and sleep in the boat. Because you are a child of God. Only a child of God can do that. The other people will be trying to just get the water out of the boat. They'll be struggling. Allah will say, do you want us to die? God, look after you are looking at me. Show the word that you are my father. Show the word that you are my God. <laughs> but the child of God sleeps in the midst of storms. Because there's peace. Because he's surrounded by angels. My friends, can I make it able to tell you that even though there are storms and there will be storms, no storm is strong enough to destroy a child of God. Are you following me? Are you with my friends? Know what? No storm is strong enough to destroy a child of God. And Jesus, the Bible does not lie to us. He says that even if you go through the fire, when you go through, he didn't say if, he said when, do you understand? When you go through the fire, when you go through the waters, they're not going to overwhelm you. The fire will not burn you. Do you understand? So don't be surprised that you have problems. You understand? Even though, even God himself has problems. The whole world is not yet saved. God has problems. You know, every day when, when you see an unusual girl, when you see a drug addict, it is God's problem. He's pain in his heart. It's not only with our problem. And look at, look, imagine, look at all the problems in the world that God has. Unsafe souls. People perishing. People depressed. People in addiction. And yet God has not died. How many problems do you have? No money. No food. Is that one? Can you carry, can you, can you carry the problem of the world? God, only God, one person is carrying the whole problem of the world. And he's not dying. But you are a child of God. You have his life on your inside. You are in his image. You are in his likeness. His life is, is, is embedded in you. You are a child of grace. Praise Jesus forevermore. I'm just saying this to tell you this morning that you have to be confident about life. Are you with me? Life does not answer to fearful people. Life answers to bold people. And this kind of boldness I'm talking about only can be found in God. It's not, it's not worldly arrogance. It's a boldness that is found in God. It's not, it's not a boldness that is built on money. Because even the, the richest people still commit suicide. The richest people jump into lagoons. The richest people hang themselves. So what? What boldness is there now in, in money? I'm not talking of that kind of boldness. I'm talking of the boldness that you have on your inside because you know that you are a child of God. And you have to understand that whatever you are going through, whatever season you are passing through, will pass through. <laughs> it will pass. But it will pass is not motivational speaking. It will pass because you have stayed as a child of God. You have stayed in your identity. 
If you say it will pass, it will pass, and you keep on crying, you're afraid. It will not pass, so it's not that will kill you. But when you know that you're a child of God, and you stay in that realization, and stay in that identity, your storm will pass. And not only will your storm pass, you're going to pass through the storm victorious. And not only that you'll be victorious, you'll come out with an imprint of Christ. Because every time you are going through a storm, you are going through storms, is because, are you following me? God's intention, even though God is not, is not the one that causes storms, but his intention through the storms for you is that you come out with an imprint of Christ. That there will be an imprint, imprint of Christ upon your life. Praise Jesus forevermore. I think I've encouraged you enough this morning. Are you encouraged? If you are encouraged, give, give the Lord a big hand. Ah, uh-uh. no, but you are not encouraged. <laughs> Don't pretend like you're encouraged. Just pretend. Praise Jesus forevermore. So let's continue with our teaching. We started a teaching two weeks ago, I, I, I believe, or three weeks ago. The local assembly. The local assembly. Praise Jesus forevermore. Lord, we trust you for understanding. We trust you for grace. We trust you for entrance. We trust you for access to your heart. Access to holy things. Access to the things in your heart. Access to your presence, to your very tabernacle. We give you praise in Jesus' name. So, we began to talk about the local assembly. Uh, I said I'm going to divide into five parts. Introduction, the spirit of the local assembly, the purpose of the local assembly, the power of the local assembly, and the government of the local assembly. Can I come again? Introduction, the spirit of the local assembly, the purpose of the local assembly, the power of the local assembly and the government of the, of the local assembly. We are still on the introduction. Don't worry. Don't, don't be in a hurry. It's a series. Amen. And I said I decided, I decided to do this series on Sundays, Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings because I want a lot of us to partake of it. Because if I say I should do it on Thursdays and Sunday evenings, some of us will go to work and won't be able to make it. And we've not yet started online service. Praise Jesus forevermore. That online service is like it's, it's, it's now turning to a deceit, to deception. People don't want to be part of this church again. They want to be the online members. No online members anywhere. You need to be part of the local assembly. Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Amen. So I'll be doing it on, we are doing this series Sunday mornings and sun, Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings so that a large part of our members can be a partaker of this teaching. And don't forget, you can download our teachings. You can listen to our teachings again over and over on our social media channels, and those on Facebook, on YouTube, on Telegram. You can access our messages, our teachings. Just search for Glory Center Community Church, Igondo. Glory Center Community Church, Igondo. Go to YouTube, go to Facebook, go to Telegram. Search for Glory Center Community Church, Igondo. And access our teachings and keep listening. Praise Jesus forevermore. So I said I want you guys to, that church members, I want you to really be a particle of this teaching. And that's why I'm doing it on Sundays. Because I know you are not going to work on Sunday. Any work, any work, anybody that wants to employ you on Sunday, I bind the person. <laughs> say amen. Anybody that wants to employ you and say come to work on Sunday, I bind them. Say Amen. So if you go and take a job of two million naira per month, and they say Sunday is there, I'll, uh, don't come and tell me. Just steal the letter. Don't receive it. It's not the will of God. Any work that has Sunday, Sunday morning, so ah, it's not God's will for your life. In Jesus' name, we pray. <laughs> say Amen. amen. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Now, like I said, this teaching is the teaching on the local assembly is the most important teaching any Christian would ever hear. And I have to keep reiterating this. Now, when I say, I've explained already, when I say it's the most important teaching anybody will ever hear, I'm not saying from me. You understand? I'm not saying this particular series that I'm teaching. I'm saying any teaching on the local assembly, wherever it's being taught and correctly taught, is the greatest teaching any Christian would ever hear. And it's the greatest teaching we ever need. The teaching on what? The local assembly. Can you say the local assembly? There is no teaching that is greater than the teaching on the local assembly. And it's because we have missed this teaching on local assembly that it now looks as if the principles of other teachings are not working. Do you understand? Because everything has to start from and be built on the local assembly. 
Like I told you, if you say uh, seven ways to access supernatural order of miracles, if you are not connected to a local assembly, you can't access any supernatural miracle, order of miracles. Are you following me? Eight ways to grow in grace and become like Jesus in seven days. <laughs> you, know, you know, from the title, you know, you know that one is already fake. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can't become like Jesus in seven days. But let's assume it's possible to, to become like Jesus in seven days. It can only happen in the context of the, of the local assembly. So you can't become like Jesus outside of the local assembly. Are you following me? So just think of, yeah, I know some of you like fine, fine, yeah, high, high teachings. Assessing the oracles of the spirit. You can't, <laughs> you can't assess any oracle if you're not part of the what? Local assembly. Any oracle you are assessing that you're not part of local assembly is Ifa and Ogu and Noya and Shongu. <laughs> you understand? The local assembly is the foundation of the life of the Christian man. Are you following me? The local assembly do what? Is the foundation of the Christian man. Is the foundation of the life of the Christian man. And what's the meaning of foundation? You must understand what foundation means. Foundation means the most important thing. Do you understand? Foundation means the most important thing in the local assembly. The reason why many people are miserable today is because they are not connected to a local assembly. Are you following me? When people are not connected to local assemblies, destinies are destroyed. And people, and people whose destinies have been destroyed, when they get connected to a local assembly, destinies are restored. Do you understand? And many of us are witnesses to these things. Because all of the resources of God have been what deposited where? In the local assembly. I taught us last week, Sunday evening. Are you following me? Because the church is built on this rock, on Christ. They are one. This structure we are seeing is one with the foundation. So you cannot see the foundation outside of this structure. Anywhere you see this structure, you continue to see the foundation. So Jesus has no resource or no resources outside this local assembly. Or for anyone outside of this local assembly. The best you can get is the crumbs that they also give dogs. You understand? Because sometimes, God, this God is also merciful. He can throw, but the best God can give to what? Dogs. Those outside, don't look at them, is what? Crumbs. Crumbs. The one that falls on the children's table. The one that falls on the taking care of the children. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Danny, I'm very, very happy to see you. God bless you. Make sure you see me after the service. So let's talk. Let's just gist. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Don't let anybody whine you as I do, uh, to disconnect from, from local assembly. To disconnect from local assembly is to disconnect from your destiny. <laughs> oh my Jesus. Are you following me? Can you hear me? To disconnect from the local assembly is what? Is to disconnect from destiny. Are you hearing me? To disconnect from the local assembly is to disconnect from destiny. There's no destiny outside the local assembly. No destiny. Praise Jesus. So all those arguments on social media, no need for church, no need for local assembly. You are the church, you are this, uh, it's stress. Don't stress yourself. All what you will become in life, God has planned it and packaged it with a local assembly. Praise Jesus forevermore. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. So we took our test from the book of Matthew. So we'll read quickly again. Matthew chapter 16. We're going to read quickly. Matthew chapter 16 from verse 13 to 23. Matthew 16 from verse 13 to 23. Praise Jesus. Matthew 16 from verse 13 to 23. That's where we picked our test from. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of, Levi, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven, verse 18, and I say unto thee that thou hast Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, 
and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever that shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever that shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged his disciples that they should, not, they should tell no man that it was Jesus the Christ. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. Verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou servest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Praise Jesus. So we've considered like four teachings, right? From this test. So I don't need to go over and over again. We've considered the fact that the church is built on the identity of Christ. Praise Jesus forevermore. That the church is what? Built on the identity of Christ. So let me just add that. Ah, ah, these children are doing wonderful. Please just let me close those windows. <laughs> let me close that window and this one. Uh -huh, that's how we want it. They should be disturbing us so that we leave this place for them. We're going to find another bigger place. <laughs> Praise Jesus, everyone. Be true. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Can we appreciate Joy? She's doing a great job with the children's church. I appreciate Joy. I appreciate Joy. She's doing a very great job with the, with the children's church. God will bless her. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we're seeing that the... The church is built on the identity of Christ. Amen. And I told you we can't talk about the local assembly without first of all talking about the church. Because the local assembly is the church and the church is, is local assembly. Even though in the course of this series, I'll still be more specific. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. Amen. And we find that anytime the church appears in a city, what happens? The gates of hell suddenly what? Are awakened. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So the gates of hell suddenly come into action whenever the church is what? Whenever the church appears in a city. So the gates of hell can be sleeping before the church comes. But once a church, once the church comes and says, I'm coming to this city, the gates of hell appear as though to destroy the church. But Jesus has given the promise that what? The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Are you following me? And because you are rightly connected to the church, you need to understand that the gates of hell cannot prevail against your marriage. The gates of hell cannot prevail against your finances. The gates of hell cannot prevail against your career. The gates of hell cannot prevail against your health. The gates of hell cannot prevail against you. Because you are part of the church and you are rightly connected. So I want to proceed today in this introduction. Read again, look at verse 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Praise Jesus. So we've considered that this rock that was being spoken about is Christ. It's the person of Christ. It's not Peter. It can't be Peter. Even Peter said that it can't be him. Even now that he's already in heaven, he knows that it's not him. <laughs> so don't think it's Peter. Are you following me? And we've seen from scriptures the such scripture find that it is not Peter. It is Christ, the person of Christ. The contest even reveals it. Amen. So let's proceed. I don't know how far I'll be able to go today, but I want to say something that is very, very important to us. We need to understand that the church is not man's idea. It belongs to Jesus. What did I say? The church is not what? It's not man's idea. It belongs to what? To Jesus. Now, many times, the way, or oftentimes, or over the, over the time, the way we relate with the church, our attitude towards the church reveals a sickness in our mind. Are you following me now, my friends? Are you following me? Over time, the way we re relate towards the church, our attitude towards the church has betrayed a particular sickness in our soul. And once that sickness, we've come to the conclusion that the church is man's idea. <coughs> Amen. Because if we're not thinking that the church is man's idea, some of the attitude we have towards the church, we will not have it. Are you following me? Are you with me, my friend? Unless you are, unless you've concluded, unless you have come to the conclusion that the church is man's idea, 
Nothing would make you, nothing can ever happen that should make you go and protest against the church and say they should shut it down. That they're not going to hold service because of something that happened. Are you following me? Are you following me? Nothing, nothing on earth. I said, I mean, and I said nothing. Nothing should make you. Nothing would make you carry placards and Christian youths. Are you following me? Those that carry placards or that are carrying placards are not Muslims. Are you following me? They are not idol worshippers. They are the Moses. They are the Elijahs. They are the Davids. No, it's not like this. No. <laughs> Praise Jesus. They are the Davids. They are the Aarons. That's their name. They are the ones carrying placards against the church and nothing that is shut, that the church, that, that churches be shut down, that there, sh- there shouldn't be services because some things happened or are happening. Amen. Now, if not that, we have come to the conclusion that the church is man's idea, that should never happen. Are you following me? That should never what? Happen. It's an anomaly. And it reveals the sickness in our soul. That we think that the church is what? Man's idea. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking to pastors. Don't, don't expect me to say pastors too, you know. I'm not, that's not my, if I'm talking to, if I'm in a leaders meeting, I know what to say because I know what I'm saying. But I'm talking to you guys. My brother and my sisters. Do you understand? There's a way we teach the scriptures when it comes to when we're talking to men of God. When we're talking to leaders. Spiritual leaders. So don't expect me to start saying, uh, the man of God, you should know that. He is not, church is not man's idea. He should know how to do the church. He should not love it. Over. That's not, that's not my business. At least for this discourse. If I'm privileged to speak to Christian, to, to Christian leaders, to leaders, to pastors, what I'll say to them will be different from what I'm saying to you. Are you following me? But my point is, the church is not man's idea. So you must be careful how you relate with the church, how you engage with the church. Praise Jesus. Many things that happened in the past few years reveals the position of the art of the average Christian towards the church. Are you following me? Are you following my friends? Reviewed what? The position of the art of what? Of the average Christian towards what? The church. We think that the church is man's idea. Friends, the church is not, is not man's idea. The church is the idea of Jesus. And if the church is the idea of Jesus, it's beyond your comprehension. Are you following me? Do you know so many people think they can advise the church? Do you understand? That no, 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 that's not, that's not how to do church. It's how you should do church. They've never, they've never been class captain before. These people that are talking, they've never, they've never been class captain. Are you following me now, my friends? The people that want to advise the church have never been class captain before. Even in their family, in their Balika family, they have never successfully completed a task before. Ah, by your, make sure you watch this place before I come back home. Before the mother comes back, the boy has packed up the plate and put it inside the cupboard. He has gone to play ball. But now, Bayo can come out and tell us how to do church. Bayo can come out and tell us what is wrong with church? <laughs> he can, he can, he can rightly identify the problems of the church. You don't know the problems of the church because you don't know the church. I you following my friends? Because the obvious is not always the obvious. Are you following me? So because it's not man's, because the church is not man's idea, man's idea cannot rightly position the church. You didn't get that. <laughs> Even if you think the church is missing it somewhere and somehow, are you following me? Because the church is not man's idea, man's idea cannot what? Rightly position the church. Man's idea cannot reposition the church. Man's idea cannot correct the church. Man's idea cannot repair the church. Man's idea cannot revive the church. Man's idea cannot bring the church where it is supposed to be. Amen. No, 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 no. That pastor, that's not the way how to, that's not how to be a pastor. That's not how to do church. Come and tell me how to be a class captain. He doesn't know. 
He has never been a successful. Just one thing, class captain, he can't do. He chop all the money they gave him for the assignment. He chop it. <laughs> thirteen naira that they contributed for pencil, ordinary pencil, thirteen naira. Twenty students. How much is thirteen naira? Twenty two hundred naira. The guy, he said he didn't know where he put it again. I said lie. He has spent it. But it's that same guy that can tell pastors how to be pastors. It's that same guy that can tell church how to be church. It's that same guy that knows whether that church needs a private jet or not. It's that same guy that knows whether the church should feed the poor or not. It's that same guy that knows whether the church should do uh, uh, empowerment or not. He knows everything. Why? He thinks that what? The church is what? Man's idea. So you now see a lot of ideas coming in. You know, let us do it this way. Let's start feeding the poor. We should start. No, no, no. It's not time to build universities. Don't build. The churches are building too much universities and they are charging money. And, and the money they used to build it is the money of the pepper sellers that they contributed. Do you know how much these universities are? How much are pepper sellers giving us offering? He says it's the poor. And it's the poor. It's the poor people that contributed money to, save, to, to build the university. Ow! Praise Jesus. I read, I don't, I can't remember where I read it. That winners, they are, they are currently embarking on a project. I can't remember where I read it. That the starting point of that project, that they've made a payment of 100 billion naira cash. No go come. 100 billion naira. And they are just, that's the starting point to start the project. 100 billion. And they didn't borrow from bank. They didn't borrow from any institution. Cash, 100 billion. Deposit. As part of the starting of the work. Tell me, how many poor will contribute? How many, how many, how much would the poor contribute to make 100 billion naira to just start a project? Tell me. So stupid thing, because you think that church is man's idea. Are you following my friends? You know, being 100 billion naira is not small money. <laughs> 100 billion naira will change the whole of the Gondo community. <laughs> it will change the family, the life, the physical family of every family. The physical life of every family in this city. Are you following me? Take it from Yanobaja to Yanoba. Every family, the roads, electricity, 100 billion naira will successfully settle every family. And that's all one church. Just to start a project. And it says the money of the poor. <laughs> May you not be poor. <laughs> And if it's the poor that gets that kind of money, may you, may you be part of those poor. <laughs> hey, why? I'll be tired. If it's the poor that gave that hundred billion naira, let, let me join them. <laughs> because if the poor can, can give hundred billion to start a project, ah, those guys are, they are in the class of Dangote. The poor they are in the class of Dangote. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. The church is not man's idea. So you, are, you had better stop all your intelligent theories concerning the church. So in te- the, the church cannot operate. No, you can laugh. This is a, you can laugh. You are free. You are in your father's house. There's fullness of joy. We laugh in our own church. You understand? You, you get. The angel will not slap you. <laughs> Praise Jesus forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Intelligence cannot be used to oppress the church or to discern the church. Are you following me? Because the church is not man's idea. You can't use intelligence to run the church. You can't use intelligence to oppress the church. You can't use intelligence to put the church in order. This is not the idea of man. Are you following me? Praise Jesus forevermore. Now look at that place at that Matthew chapter... Praise Jesus. Look at that Matthew chapter chapter 16. Look at verse 18 again. Don't forget I said that what? The church is not what? Man's idea. It belongs to Jesus. Verse 18 says, And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build what? My church. It even said the church. Can you, do you understand? The church is so personal to the heart of Jesus that is selfish about it and is personal, is arrogant about it. He says, my church. You understand? 
if it's rich, now this, this understanding Bible is very, very sweet and very easy. Don't struggle with it. It is Greek. This is the Greek. This is the Hebrew. These are the, these words they are saying in heaven about it. You stress yourself. You understand? If it trees and we build the church, it will still be beautiful. It will be fine. But Jesus meant to say something. You understand? Jesus meant to what? Say something. He's deliberate about his choice of words. He could have said, on this rock, I will build the church. And, and nothing would have been wrong with the statement. Because that would be what he meant to say. Are you following me? To have read beautifully well. But he chose to say, on this rock, I will build my church. Are you following me? I will build what? My church. So the church is so personal to the art of Jesus that the first time he will speak about the church, or that will say the church appear in the Bible, Jesus calls it my church. So in the actual sense, of course, you can hear pastor say my church. And it's not wrong. You understand? It's in the contest. Do you understand? So that when you now hear another pastor say my church, oh, did they now say my church? Now say, ah, pastor, like you are past leader. I've done that. There's a contest. What I'm saying. So that when I'm praying to God, I say, God, bless my people. Sometimes I say, bless your people. He knows my people are his people. <laughs> you understand? Uh-huh. Praise Jesus. So that today you hear pastor saying my church. Or you hear another pastor saying my church. Don't think they, they are carnal. No. It's a contest. Are you following me? But in the real sense, the only person that has the right in the real sense of that word, my. You understand? The only person that has the right to call the church my church is Jesus. Do you understand? Don't confuse yourself between what I say when I say my church and Jesus Christ says my church. I'm saying something entirely different from Jesus. Uh Aha. So in the real sense of ownership, are you following me? Jesus is the one who can say, my church. Are you following me? He's the one who can say what? My church. So, the true ownership of the church belongs to Jesus. Where is Tayo's iPhone? Let Mubara smash it on the floor. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> You want to practicalize something, huh? You want to practicalize? You see, over his iPhone, Tayo can even disobey the pastor. Wow. <laughs> no, I'm teaching. No, it's fine. You are not disobeying me. I'm teaching. I, I want to, we have to be practical with these things. You understand? Over what? His iPhone. Tayo can be what? Can even disobey the pastor. He will not let Mubarak smash his iPhone on the floor. And the day Mubarak mistakenly does it, even though him and Tayo are so close, they are paddy. He knows the he knows the reaction. Even if you not collect all the money from him, he says, Just bring small. <laughs> you understand? Now, why would Tayo disobey the pastor? He's not disobedience, you understand? Uh, he's, he's, I'm, I'm teaching practically. Why would Tayo disobey the pastor when I said he should give his one to Mbrak to smash on the floor? He said, Ah, uh-huh. eh, uh-huh. ah. The pastor killed him. So then, no. It's because he has placed ownership on that phone. And because he has placed ownership on that phone, he has placed value on that phone. He has put value on the phone. The phone is precious to him. <laughs> Are you following me? The phone is what? It's so precious to Tayo. Are you following me? That he wouldn't let Mubarak smash it on the floor. That he would do anything to ensure that nobody destroys it. Are you following me? That even if, even though Mubarak is his buddy, his brother, his guy, he might mistakenly break his, mistakenly step, mistakenly, not deliberately, steps on the phone, he will still see Tyre's red eye. Guys, if you mean, even if it's mistakenly that you don't do church anyhow, you, you still see the red eye of Jesus, so, mistakenly. Are you following me? So, if Tyre can play so much value on his iPhone, are you following me? Because it's so precious to him, because he has placed his tag on it. He has placed his identity on it. How much more is Jesus so jealous about his church? Are you following me now? Are you following me? How much more is what? Is Jesus so jealous about his church? Can I quickly encourage you again? 
because you are part of the part of the church, Jesus is so jealous over your life. Are you now following me? Jesus is so what? Jealous over your life. He can't want your life to be destroyed. He can't. Are you following me? He won't release you for destruction. He won't let your life be destroyed. He can't. Even if Satan mistakenly touches you or, or any man mistakenly touches you, God with you, he will deal with them. Are you following me? That's it. The problem with preachers is that most of them want to encourage our people as we are preaching also. But see, just be getting encouragement from the, the teaching. <laughs> Do you understand? We don't have time to be going back and mentioning you. When I'm saying the church, put yourself inside. Open the, your hands. Put yourself. Anything I'm saying, put yourself. You are part of the church. You are in the church. Do you understand? Now, Jesus is so jealous over what? His church. Are you following me? Tyre's phone would not be more than maybe 300,000 naira max. Tyre, am I right? It's not up to high. That's why I said it will not be more than. So Tyre's phone is not even up to 300k. It's not more than, and it's not more than 300k. But there's so much jealousy places over that phone. How much is the church? The church was purchased by the life of Jesus. We'll still get there. Are you following me now? The church was what? It is something that merely was Max 300k. Someone will protect it jealously with all his strength. Do you know sometimes you want to fall down? Is your, you, you, you are holding your phone and you want to fall down. And you know your leg can break if you fall down. You prefer to fall down than your phone to fall down. Guys, am I, am I, am I lying? Mary said I'm lying. <laughs> I'll send you out of my church. <laughs> praise, praise Jesus forevermore. <laughs> Shout hallelujah. So you want to fall on a staircase and you know if you fall, your leg, the way it is, can break. Hey, but if you, if you, you know if you fall like that and your leg break, you still protect your phone. But if you don't fall, if you fall very well where your leg will not break and you, and you know it's your phone that will break. You prefer to fall in a way where your leg will break <laughs> than for your phone to break. <laughs> oh my Jesus. Why? There's an attachment between you and your stuff. Whatever you have placed ownership on, you have put a portion of yourself in it. Are you following me? Are you with my friends? Whatever you have what? Placed ownership on, you have put what? A portion of yourself in it. There's a portion of yourself in it. And concerning the church, not just that there's a portion of Jesus in the church, the fullness of Jesus is in the church. Are you following me? Are you following me? It is not just that what? There's a portion of Jesus in the church. It is that what? The fullness of Jesus is in the church. Oh my Jesus. You had better love the church. Do you know that Mubarak can begin to dislike, I mean, Tayo can begin to dislike Mubarak if he sees that he's not handling his things anyhow. If he sees that he's handling his things anyhow. That Mubarak doesn't care about how he just handles his phone anyhow, handles his system anyhow. He gave him the system in one hour. He has removed one key from the keyboard. <laughs> ah, he repaired it again. In two hours, the screen, he has broken part of the screen. Do you know it can start causing enmity in his heart? You don't know. It can. Because by the way Mubarak handles Tayo's things, amen, Tayo can begin to see the value that Mubarak puts on him himself. <laughs> Are you with me, my friend? Are you with me? Amen. I can actually see your love for me in the way you undo my things. I can see the value you put on me. So Jesus actually measures the value we put on him by the way we undo his church. By the value we put on his church. Are you following me? Jesus does what? He measures the value we put on him by what? By the value we put on his church. You can't say you value Jesus and not value his church. So Jesus is deliberate about our choice of what? I will build my church. 
Are we building my church? So he wants all of us to know that this church I'm talking about is my church. It belongs to me. I have put my identity on it. I've put my imprint on it. I've put my stamp on it. I've treasured it so much. I've valued it so much. The value of the church is the life of Jesus. The value of the church is the blood of Jesus. Oh, can I say to you again? I, I, I wish you would just put yourself in the church. The value of your life is the life of Jesus. The value of your life is the blood of Jesus. Are you following me? I will build my church. Now, we are not even going to go into the matter of wife or girlfriend or fiance. Fiance and fiance. We are still talking about phone. <laughs> The day Mubarak beats Olamide. <laughs> the day Mubarak beats Olamide. <laughs> you will know that Tokma is not really a Christian brother like that. <laughs> you know, know Tokma is a Christian brother. <laughs> the day Mubarak beats Olamide. <laughs> It beats and talking means air crying, see blood everywhere. <laughs> you know they are not yet married. But she is my fiancé. <laughs> are you following me? Are you following me? My fiancé. There is an ownership on her. There is a tag on her. There is a value of place on her. There is a portion of him in her, on her. That day, Mubarak would know that Tokwe is not really a Christian brother. That is not really gentle. I should brother you gentle. Before Tokman tells the pastor, he will have dealt with Mubarak. He <laughs> will have beaten him. To now do as if he's a good Christian brother. He might not touch him, but he just do as if, as if everything is fine. You now go and arrange guys outside. You now do as if he doesn't know about it. <laughs> he will arrange some people from Lasso to just catch Mubarak in one corner in school and beat him very well. <laughs> he will arrange some soldiers of Christ. He will, not even, he will not even mind arranging soldiers of Satan on this matter. Guys, ownership has power. Are you following me? Ownership does what? That is fiancé. They are not yet married. The day talk best looks at my wife in the face and says, Mom is Oteria. Eh, tia, mon kote in she. You know, you are not really, you are not abused that very well. It's, it's starting small, small. Serious, serious. The because I'm a man of God and I'm a shepherd. Makasara. But in my heart, I'm disconnected from Dogman. He's no more. I'm not watching over him again. You understand? He will still be doing the technical director. But in my heart, I'm praying for another tech director. So I can send him away physically. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Shout hallelujah. There's a value, there's a power that ownership puts on a team. Are you following me? There's what? There's a power that what? Ownership does what? Puts on a team. There's a glory, there's an authority that ownership confers on it. Oh my Jesus. The church is so glorious even if it's simply because it is owned by Jesus. Are you following me? Oh my Jesus. The church is so glorious simply because it is what? Owned by Jesus. Are you with me, my friends? The church is what? The church is so glorious simply because it is what? Owned by Jesus. It's owned by Jesus. It's so glorious. Because the very glory of Jesus has been put upon the church. Has been put upon the church. And start try to be putting yourself inside the church also in your heart as I'm speaking. The glory of Jesus has been put upon your life. Are you following me? Can you say ownership? Let me hear you say ownership. And that's what it means to be a child of God. Ownership. God owns you. So, on this rock, 
I will build my church. That's a powerful statement. Oh my Jesus. It's, it's both a powerful statement and an arrogant statement. It means that all of the church is on me. That's the true meaning of on God. On God. On God. It means that all the church is, will be, will ever be, we ever need, needs, is on me. Is on me. On me. On God. Are you following me? My church. It means that I have the responsibility, I take the responsibility for my church. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. I take what? Responsibility for my church. I am responsible for my church. Can you say ownership again? Friends, can you see that your life is owned by Jesus? Can you see that you are owned by Jesus? And this has conferred so much grace, so much glory, so much authority upon your life. Can you say, I am owned by Jesus? I am a child of God. My life is full of his glory. The reason why the earth has not been completely destroyed by Satan and why it can't be completely destroyed by Satan is because there's an ownership of God on it. There's still an ownership. There's still that tag. Are you following me? There's still what? That tag. Are you following me? Ownership is very powerful. It confers the very authority of the owner on the thing that is owned. All of you respect Olamide so much because you respect Okwe so much. The same respect you have for me is what you have for Olamide. Are you following me? Can you say ownership? Friends, ownership is powerful. I must begin to see the church in this eye. The church is not your mate. Are you following me? The church is not what? Your mate. Let's assume my wife is 18 years old. Are you following me? And all of you are 38, 38, 38, 39, 40, 43, 44. Are you following me? Because she's my wife and I'm your pastor, my wife is not your mate. (laughs) Do you understand? Because you wouldn't mind, because I'm your pastor, even if I'm 22 and you're 35, there's an honor that you put on me, there's a respect you put on me and I call to me as what? Your pastor. Amen. Now it doesn't matter that I'm 23 and you are 35, but you honor me so much, you even knew that and greet me, ah, daddy. Every time you know those churches, daddy, you are, ah, daddy. Pastor, are you following me? And I'll greet you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, man. Because I'm your father. Are you following me? Now, that same honor you put on my wife that is 18 years old and you are 43. Why would you put that same honor on my wife? My wife. Ownership. You understand? Can you say ownership? Say ownership again. Can you say my life is owned by God? I cannot be disadvantaged. Ownership is powerful, my friends. Ownership confers the authority, confers the strength, confers the privileges of the owner on the thing owned. Guys, I need you to see these things. Even though I'm teaching about the church, I'm also teaching about you because you are part of the church and you are the church. I need you to see these things and put it in your life, put it in your heart. The very privileges of Jesus, the very privileges of the Christ, of the Son of God, have been conferred upon the church. I've made him head over all things for the church. Are you following me? As what? As made him head over all things for who? For the church. Can you say ownership? Oh, I, I pray, I wish I can really drive these things into your heart. 
Ownership confers the privileges of the owner on the thing owned. It confers the power, the authority, the glory, the rights of the owner on the thing owned. The privileges of Christ and in Christ have been conferred on the church. So if you are going to enjoy those privileges, you need to be part of the church. That's even where, that's even where I want to go down to really spot, talk about this ownership. The ownership is found nowhere else apart from what? The church. There is no other thing that Jesus personalizes apart from what? His church. What you hear him say, you hear him say, my church, my kingdom. You understand? You understand? Eat, face are you with me? When you see Jesus personalizing stuff, there are things that have to do with the church and the kingdom of God. That's the only thing that he, that's what he is dear to his heart. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Jesus Christ is not so personal about the world. How do I mean the world? The, the buildings, the animals, the material things, the, the structures. Are you following me? It's not so, it's not so pers- personal to him. It's not my world in that sense. And that's when he was going to die. Amen. Even though, oh, that's the world. That's people. That's talking of people. So it's fine. It's so personal. I, I, I really want to bring out something. It's not the world, not the people. Not the people in the world. The people in the world are so dear to him. That's why he died. The world, the systems, the, the things in them, are you following me? The glory are not so dear. Are not, not so, don't let me put so. Are not dear to the heart of Jesus. Are you following me? So he never personalized it. And he didn't die for it. Are you following me? He didn't what? Die for it. You can only lay down your level what is dear to your heart. And whatever is dear to your heart is what you place your identity on. It's what you place ownership on. Amen. So Jesus says, my church, my kingdom. Are you following me? My church, my kingdom. Because that is what is beating in his heart. You say the church is dirty, but it's still the what? The church of Jesus. Are you following me? Jesus will not throw his church away because of your accusations. Even if they are correct. Are you following me? Let me say it in a better way. Jesus will not stop owning the church because of the accusations. Even if they are right. It is his church. He does not plan. Don't worry, as we put it, I'll show you, I'll show you something. Because this church was born through death and resurrection. And he has no plan to die again. He has no plan to resurrect again. He has done it once and for all. In other words, he has no plan to give birth to any other church again. Are you following me? The church he will give birth to, he has given birth to. <laughs> no plan B. Jesus asked, concerning the church, Jesus asked no words, no plan B. It is this same church. Now here we go die. You are dirty, but I will wash you. Hey, you say the church is dirty, is that weird? To sanctify and cleanse her by the washing of water, by the word. You think only you know that the church is dirty. Jesus knows it more than you. He knows dirty secrets about the church that you don't know and you will never know. But it is still what? My church. Your anger against the church cannot change the mind of Jesus towards his church. If you like, don't like my wife again. Hate her. Accuse her. Bring allegations against her. You cannot what? Change my mind. So what's her? Are you following me? Rather, rather we'll do what? We'll use the head to break the coconut. <laughs> you are done that will suffer it. Are you following me? Are you following me? 
All of the interest of Jesus is directed at his church. All of his interest. All of his interest. My church. Ownership is powerful. That is the only thing he can call his own. And is that thing he can call his own that you are now fighting, that you are angry with? And you are claiming that you love Jesus. Ah. You don't love my wife. You are angry with my wife and I say you love me. Stop whining me now. Are you following me? You can't claim to love the church. I mean, you can't claim to love Jesus. You can't claim to love Christ if you don't love the church. You don't love his church. Are you following me? Whosoever loved the Father also loved what? Who is begotten of him. The church proceeds from Jesus. It is the church of Jesus. I must be careful. Because by using the strong words, my church, he has placed ownership on the church. He has placed a tag on the church. He has placed his identity on the church. He has placed his wealth on the church. He has placed his resources on the church. So whatsoever you do to the church, you are doing to who? To Jesus. You are doing to Jesus. Whether you are a church member, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a minister, whether you are whatever you are, you are an apostle, you are a prophet. Whatsoever you do to the church, you are doing to who? You are doing to Jesus. It is his church. It is what? His church. This should humble our hearts. Are you like those, those of us that are called to serve in his church? At whatever level. Even, even as a cleaner, as an usher, should we humble our hearts? Are you following me? It is his church. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Is Jesus glorious? What about his church? It's glorious. It's glorious. You see all the decadence, you see all the decay, he sees it, and that's why he died for it. Now, the death of Jesus, he died once. Are you following me? But it's twofold. He died for the world and he died for the church. For his church. It's in Ephesians. He says he died. Let, let me show you. Let, let me read it for you. There's a portion of the death of Jesus, not like separating, you know, do you understand? The death of Jesus is focused on two things. The world and then the church. That from the world you become safe, now be a part of the church. There is now an ongoing work that that death also wrought for you as a part of the church. Now look at it. In Ephesians chapter 5, we are coming back to Matthew. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, I think verse 23. Yeah, verse, read from verse. Oh, where is it? Yeah, verse 25. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wife. Even as Christ also loved, watch it carefully. Husbands, love your wife. Even as Christ also loved what? The church and did what? And gave what? Himself for it. Compared to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave Jesus. Now all of us were once part of that world. Are you following me? But once we believe Jesus, we receive eternal life. Amen. We now became part of the church. But watch it carefully. The same strong word he used in John 3.16. He now says, even as Christ loved the church. How many times did Jesus die? Once. But in that one death, there is an interest of God concerning the world and then the church. Even as Christ loved, it is a loss. It is a, even as Christ loves the church. Even as Christ loved the church. For God so loved the world. So the love appears before he's dying. So in that one death, are you following me? In that one death of Jesus, amen, there's a significance of the love of God. Now watch it carefully. There's a significance of the love of God for the world and the love of Christ for his church. Are you following me? Without confusing you. Because the world, God loves the world because it is God's world. But Christ loves the church 
because it is the church or it is his wife. It belongs to him. It is personal to him. <laughs> Hope I'm not confusing you. God and Christ are not sharing the church together. It's one wife. Only one person can marry one wife. You understand? You marry one wife. One wife, one husband. The, the husband that the, that the family of God have decided to give the church is who? Christ. So they can't be fighting over it. They've decided in their wisdom that the person that will marry the church, that will be the husband of the church is who? Christ. Jesus. If my father, my, myself and my father, amen, and my brother, my siblings, we say that this is my wife. This is the person I'm marrying. Are you following me? My father cannot be fighting over her again and say my to personalize her to himself. She now has to be personal to me. Are you following me? So the world is personal to God, but the church is very personal to Christ. Are you following my friends? The church is very what? Personal to Christ. That's why I can call it what? My church. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. So there's a portion of the death of Jesus that touches only upon the church. Only the church. Are you following me? Only the church would enjoy that portion of the death. It's one death, so don't confuse yourself. And don't, it's not as if I'm dividing into two portions of death. That, you understand? That there's a part A, part 3, part B of the... No, 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 no. I'm talking about the interest of God in the death of Jesus. The death of Jesus has a bearing upon the world and upon the church. Are you following me? Shout hallelujah. Even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. He died, that's the, you know you know gave himself for it. What do you know gave, gave himself for it? Talk to me. He died for it. It's simple English. He died for it. So when Christ was dying on that cross, he was not just dying for the church. He was not just dying for the world. He was also dying for the church that will come out of the world. There's a, are you following me? There's a special portion. So the church has, has, a, has a special portion, though, has a double portion. Are you following me? He died for the world. Are you following me? And he died for the church. And the church will come out of the world. Are you following me? Can you not see the special interest of Christ, of God, in his church? Even as Christ loved the church. So this church that you are shouting at, Jesus Christ does what? What do we know of loved? He didn't say lost, loved. The love has been perfected. He has put everything into consideration. He has put all the backsliding that the church will experience. Are you following me? All the immorality that the church will experience. All the nonsense that will happen to the church. He has put it into account. Can I still love? Will I see? The, the, the church has not been better at that time. Do you, do you understand me? But he has, he has looked at everything. Ha, the church will backslide at different points. So they will bring idolatry into the church. And all of that. Will I still? Hey, am I ready to undergo these things? He said, yes. So the love was perfected even before he died. So the love that has been perfected, that he has seen everything, he has considered everything. Do you now think that it is now that he will not change his mind? The thing he saw, are you following me? The thing he saw and still chose to love the world, the church, and still die. He saw it, everything. Oh, you think that what is happening in the church, or what, or what has been happening, you think he's strange to God? You think it's not okay? Before he formed the church, before he birthed the church, he had known. And he still chose to love. That's why he said loved. And he died for it. And why? Look at it. And gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. Oh, excuse me. I thought the church was already sanctified and cleansed. Talk to me. I thought the church was already sanctified and cleansed. Because the church comes out of the world. Because when, when you believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior... Are you following me as a sinner? When you now believe in Jesus, you are now called out of the world. You are cleansed and sanctified in a sense. Positionally. And you are now brought into the church. But he said that in my sanctified and cleanser. Oh my, oh my Jesus. Oh my Jesus. Do you wash a place that is not dirty? Are you following me? That means that even after the church has been bettered and brought out of the world, the church will still have some dirtiness, some filth. Are you following me? There will be no need for sanctification and cleansing if there's no dirty. If there's no death. If there's no dirtiness. 
If there's no yama yama, no need for cleansing, no need for, for, for sanctification. Are you following me? But he said the reason he died for his church is so he can sanctify and cleanse it. Do you see that now? Do you see that now? If the church does not fall into decay and decadence and nonsense and rubbish, what then is the usefulness of the death of Jesus? Because he said the death is for the, for the salvation and the cleansing of the church. And he's going to cleanse the church, cleanse, 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 until there is no what? There is no spot anymore. And the church will attain perfection, I'm telling you. He doesn't give up. So he's aware, he has been aware before he died of all the corruption that, that we enter the church. That the church will pass through. What you are lamenting about that you are writing on Facebook, abusing everybody, abusing the fathers, abusing the church, no need to a church. No, no, no. Jesus Christ saw it and he chose to die. And die for that cause. That I will cleanse my church. That in my sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. And look at it, you are that church. Oh. Because if you say the church is dirty, the church is dirty, it is you that is dirty. Who is the church building? Are we not the ones that are in the church? Are we not the church? So if you are abusing the church, the church is dirty, the church is corrupt. We are the ones that are corrupt. So the cleanse is actually happening upon the soul of every believer. The dirtiness of the church, the decadence of the church, is the decadence of the individual believer. It's your decadence. So don't think of church as building. It's your decadence. Building is just where we meet. Where the church meets. Are you following me? If, if, if the church were to be building, there will, not, there will be no need for cleansing. Because the church, that, it won't experience corruption. It can't be. It's human beings that are corrupt. It's human beings so that it's corrupt. So, next time when you want to abuse the church, point your finger at yourself and eat your chest and, and be abusing yourself. When you say the church is so corrupt, the church is so useless, say, I am so corrupt, I am so useless. Because you are part of the contribution. You contribute for the corruption. All of us contribute. And Jesus had known, now you need to understand these things very well. The reason why he says for the cleansing of the church, why this, why it has to keep cleansing is because the church is not uh, a structure. The church is a people. <laughs> And those people were taken from darkness. Are you following me? And because they were taken from darkness, there's still some residue of darkness in your soul that needs to be purged. So he was ready for that work. He had rolled up his sleeves that even after saving you, I'll still keep sanctifying you. Are you following me? Because the church is you. You are the church. So it's all the corruption, it's all the bad, that after you are born again, you know, it's all the bad bad things you will still do. It's all that you will still steal, steal your mommy's money. It's all that you will still, you will still do Yahoo after you get saved. And you still speak in tongues. But he was ready for the work. That you, I, I go cleanse you. My foot, my foot, when you go clean. Ow! By the washing of water by the word, as long as you keep listening to the word. That's why church is important. That's why local assembly is important. If you want to change, you need a local assembly. God is not angry about your decadence. He's not angry about your corruption. He's not angry about your deadliness. But he's shocked that you don't want a local assembly. He's shocked. How do you want, how do you want to be cleansed? You, you think it's homo, homo, homo and apic that will cleanse you? How do you want to be cleansed? He's shocked. What is shocking God? ah. ah. This guy is so bad and he still doesn't want a local assembly. Because the cleansing happens out with the washing of water by the word. So that every day you come to church, every time you come to church and interact with your brother and your sisters, and with, 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 your, with your brother and your sisters, a cleansing is going on on your inside. Are you following me? A cleansing is what? Going on on your inside. So God is not shocked at your, at your pride. He's not shocked at the fornication. He's not shocked at your masturbation. As long as you are asking for help and trusting to drop it. And because you want to drop it, you are connected to a local assembly and you are subject to the word of God. Because it's that word that will cleanse you. Your sins don't shock God. It is your rejection of the local assembly that that shocks him. 
You follow me? Because the arrangement for your cleansing is where? In the local assembly. By the washing of water, by the word. As the word keeps coming forth, whether in, as the organizer this as a church, or when you, when you and your brothers and sisters are just meeting, talking in your, in your power, are you following me? The interaction of fellowship, are you following me? As there is such interaction, there's always cleansing by the word of God. So you see that you are in trouble if you want to disconnect from the church. Because where will you get the word? <laughs> see, no, let nobody lie to you. The word of God is only in the church of God. Are you following me? It's only where? In the church of God. It's not in the marketplace. It's not in the market. It's not in the market. It's the word you get in the church you're not going to use in the market. You're not going to use in the world. Are you following me? That he might sanctify and cleanse her. Ah. So whenever you are reading the scriptures, I don't know how you read it. Don't think of something abstract. Quickly think of yourself. You are the one that make up the church. You are the reason. When we say the church is dirty, we are saying you are dirty. When we say the church is corrupt, we are saying you are corrupt. When we say the pastors are corrupt and immoral, you are, we are saying you are corrupt and immoral. Because before you, before you became a pastor, you were you, you were a church member. Are you following me? So actually, when we're choosing to become a pastor, amen, before you were, you were not a pastor, you were a church member. But now you are a pastor. I have now said, ah, that pastor used to fornicate, used to commit adultery. No, it's not because he's a pastor. He has always been a corrupt church member. Who so needs cleansing? But now he's a pastor. So, who he is, are you following me, in his soul, does not change. Be- are you following Because we pick the pastors from the church members. Are you following me? So, corrupt, corrupt pastors are proofs of corrupt church members. Are you following me? Are you following me? Are you following my friends? He didn't become a pastor by birth. He first of all passed through Sunday school. He was in the choir. He was in the usher. He now became a pastor. He, corruption did not enter his soul when he became a pastor. He has always been a corrupt church member. Are you following me? This is how we are, all of us have problems. This is how all of us have problems. The corruption of the church is, is the corruption of the individual believer. Are you following me? The what? Corruption of the church is the what? Is the question of what? Individual believer. You subject your soul to cleansing and let us see what, what the church will look like. Wait, if every, if every member of the church is cleansed, what, what will happen to the church? The church is cleansed. The church is cleansed. So I need to understand this scripture that the messianic fan cleansed her. It's not the building, it is you, it is me, you and I. Because we're taken from the world. <laughs> Are you following me? And some corruption still stuck to our soul. But the world will cleanse it. He was not afraid. He's not afraid. He saw it. He knew the project ahead of him. Are you following me? He's not surprised that he may sanctify and cleanse with the ocean of the water by the word. Now look at it. That he might present it to himself. Can you say that personal, personal, personalization again? Himself. My church. Present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle, oh my Jesus, or any such thing, but I should behold them without blemish. Now, this will happen because this church has subjected itself to what? To the cleansing of the word. Friends, if you subject yourself to the cleansing of God's word, it doesn't matter what your corruption is today. You will become a glorious church. You will become a glorious believer. You just keep listening to the word. Keep doing the word. Are you following me? The only thing, God is not angry, he's not shocked. What shocks him is your rejection of the word. Are you following me? Is your what? Rejection of the word. Because his only tool to cleanse you is his word. If you keep subjecting yourself to the cleansing of the word, you will come out a glorious child, a glorious Christian, a glorious being. You will be without spot or wrinkle. You will be only out without blemish. Friends, your holiness is possible. Are you following me? Talk to me. Your practical word, holiness is what? Possible. Your holiness will not just stay in your spirit, it will sit in your body. Because it says that at the end of the day, when the church has been cleansed by the word, subject to the cleansing of that by the word, say to be holy, without blemish. Can you say my holiness is possible? 
Can you say, I can stop fornicating. I can stop lying. I can, you know, you understand? I can stop it. My holiness is possible. Because that is, that is the end of the church. That's where, it's, that's where it's taking us to. He said, we will be only without blemish. We will be glorious. He's talking about you. But don't forget the process. By the cleansing of water, by the word. Keep listening to the word. Subject yourself to the word. So I will build my church. Are you following me? So Jesus so personalizes the church. He loves the church so much. He died for the church. He died for the church. Praise Jesus. He did what? He died for the church. He gave himself for the church. For the church. Are you following me? That is my sanctifier and cleanser. She will without spot or wrinkle. So presently Jesus Christ sees the state of the church. But he has died for the cleansing of that word. Impurity. Are you following me? So you, you see that when you are angry against you, you see that you are, you are just stressing yourself. What you are angry about, the dirtiness, the decadence, Jesus Christ has seen it. And he still chose to love each other like that. Are you following me? And he chose to die. And he died for it. So that he will eventually cleanse it. So you, you are angry at what has been, at what, at what, what has been paid for. What has been paid for? You are angry. Hey, see the church go. Hey, the church is doing anyhow. He saw everything. And he died. For it. Guys, stop your anger against the church. It is his church. And he has planned, see, see. Jesus Christ has perfected the redemption of his church. He has planned how his church will be redeemed. He has perfected it. He's in his death and resurrection. He's in the cleansing of his word. He has, he has finished it. Because it's not, it is not man's idea. Stop thinking that church is man's idea. Stop giving us your opinion on how to do church. Stop telling us, how, we know we are corrupt. Stop telling us, we, we know we are corrupt, but he saw our corruption. And he says he still loved us like that. And because of that corruption that he saw ahead, he died. He gave himself for our cleansing. If you antagonize the church today, you should not be ashamed tomorrow when we become glorious. Because he will not stop cleansing us. He won't stop. Are you following me? He won't stop. Can you say he won't stop? He won't give up. He won't stop. It is my church. It is his church. He has determined. Let me speak like an, like an evil man. He has determined. <laughs> he has determined in advance that he's going to cleanse his church. He has determined. He's bent on cleansing his church. Can I talk to you? You are bent on destroying the church, but he is bent on glorifying the church. Do you understand? You are bent on what? The stranger, but is what? Bent on what? Which person will come to pass? Who is, who is stronger? <laughs> who is stronger? <laughs> Jesus. Your desire is too small to put down the church. Your anger is too small to put down the church. It's not man's idea. If the church were man's idea, maybe protest can pull it down. If the church were man's idea, maybe our anger can pull it down. If the church were man's idea, maybe intellectual, intellectualism can pull it down. Amen. If the church were man's idea, maybe conspiracy can pull it down. But because it is not man's idea, none of these things can pull it down. Because he has seen in advance what the church will pass through. And that the church is coming from the wilderness. That the church is coming from Egypt. Oh my Jesus. Don't let me go there. He has seen that the church is coming from Egypt. The church is coming from the world. And the church will still have corrupt practices. He knows that he still has to take the idols from them. And he's prepared. He's prepared. He has died. Guys, let it be known to you that this church that you are looking at, are you following me? That you are insulting and abusing, Jesus has died for it. And not the same, not, the, not, not with the same purpose of the world. Not, the same, not, not with the same purpose for which he died for the world. Don't forget. Are you following me? The pur- for, the pur- Jesus Christ is not interested in cleansing that you continue to cleanse. Now, the cleansing of the church is continual until it comes to perfection. It's not like that with the world. Jesus Christ cannot be cleansing the world. If you, you cannot cleanse the you cannot, you, you cannot cleanse the world. You have to save the world. 
If you cleanse him today, he's still, he'll still, he'll still inside. He can't, he can't be cleansed. Are you following me? The person in the world cannot be cleansed. Still, as long as he's still in the world, he cannot be cleansed. He needs to come to the church to be cleansed. So you need to first save him from the world. Save him from Egypt first. Are you following me? Before you can now put a new garment on him. If, if, before you can now train him after the order of the priesthood. You can't raise the priests of Canaan in Egypt. Are you following me? You can't do what? You can't raise the priests of Canaan where? In Egypt. You have to bring them out of Egypt. Cleanse them. Put a new garment on them. Then train them in the way of the Lord. So we, we can't, Jesus can't claim, he has no interest in cleansing the world. He died for the world to save the world, to bring them out of that corruption, out of that dead state. So they can now start learning the way of the Lord. They can now start learning to be cleansed in the church. Are you following me? So not as he did it for the world, did he do it for the church. It's an, oh, I don't want to use this, an higher thing, so that you won't distinguish between the dead. It's, the, it's one death. But the purposes are higher. The purposes are, are slightly different. Are you following me? For God so loved the word, I give only because God is so that those who have in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, when you receive the eternal life of God, are you following me? Are you fo- he says, the ultimate is so that you won't perish. Are you following me? By virtue of the reception, reception of eternal life. But if you keep studying the scripture further, not, not, not just in John. Are you following me? If you keep studying the scripture further, they didn't tell us, is, is, by studying many scriptures, we now, under- we now begin to understand the dynamics of these workings. How a man will not perish. Are you following me? You need to receive the eternal life of God. Are you following me? Are you following me? But we now find that it is a progressive stuff. We now find that if you don't subject, that after you have received the eternal life of God, if you don't submit to your, yourself to the cleansing of water by the world, you are still liable to perish. Are you following me? So even God's project for the world not to perish, is still subject to what? The world has been saved. They are now in the church. They are now, they are now being cleansed. Were, were you not in the world before? You were in the world before, but now you are in the church. And what's happening to you in the church? Cleansing. It's part of your process not to perish. It's part of the process of making you grow in eternal life. It's part of the process of making you to announce eternal life and walk in it. So that simple word you also in John 3, verse 16. But that's when I study the whole Bible. <laughs> hey, I'm not born again. I cannot be lost. I'm not. And you still continue the way of the world. You are not subject to the cleansing of water by the world. You say, yeah, I cannot perish again. You have perished already. Amen. Shout hallelujah. So it's a journey. The journey begins by picking you from the world. The journey continues by what? By grooming you in the church. Amen. And it's now perfected. What will be perfected is the church, not the world. Are you following me? No plans to perfect the world. The plans for the world is to destroy it. Are you following me? Are you with me? The plans for the world is the what? It's to destroy it. The only, are you following me? The only thing that has plans for perfection is the church. It will become a glorious church. What does this mean? If Jesus says that what? The church will become a glorious church. If the Bible teaches that it will become a glorious church. And we sit in Revelation and all of that. Are you following me? It means that the church can't be destroyed. It can't be destroyed. Are you following me? Nothing can destroy the church. Nothing. Jesus Christ said to his disciples, is he in, in, that, is he in that Matthew 24? He says, and this generation will not pass while all these things will happen. You understand? Nothing will happen in the world that will destroy the church. Is, that generation is not Peter and people that are ahead him. They've already died. They've passed. It's the church generation. So, many evil things will happen in this life, but the generation of the church will survive it. The church generation will what? Will survive. He says, this generation will not pass. And all these things will happen. So, let famine come. Let hunger come. Let sword come. Let, let martyrdom come. Let everything come. You can't destroy the church. The generation will be here until Jesus comes. Jesus Christ will meet this generation here. He will meet the church here. <clears throat> Nothing can destroy the church. He will meet that generation. Are you following me? He was speaking about the church generation. That whatever the earth goes through, whatever the earth brings against it, whatever the state, the season of the earth, the church generation will be standing. Guys, no matter what happens in the earth, the church will still be standing. Are you following me? No matter what, what happens in the earth, the church will what? still be standing. It's the promise of Jesus. He gave his life for it. This is my church. Can you see the power of ownership? 
Guys, what can destroy your life? Tell me, what can destroy your life? What can ruin your life? What can make your life miserable? Why? Tell me why. I am owned by Jesus. Can you say, I am owned by Jesus? Can you scream, I am owned by Jesus? I want to hear you scream it, I am owned by Jesus. One more time, I am owned by Jesus. And he's building me. It's powerful. I will build my joy. That build is not once and for all. Are you following me? It's still a continuity. It's still like that Ephesians. I will build. He can't build the world. It's the church he will build. Ah, Paul really understood the gospel of Jesus. He really interpreted it to us well in the epistles. Are you following me? Jesus Christ said, I will build my church. What, what will he build? Church. What did Paul say? He will cleanse. Church. That building is, a, is an ongoing and a continuous work until the, day of, until the day of perfection. Are you following me? Are you following me? The building of the church is what? Is an ongoing work. A continuous church. A continuous work until what? The day of perfection. To understand that single statement of Jesus, I will build my church and, and blah, 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 all of that. Just read Ephesians chapter 5. Read that part. Let's say, for the cleansing of water, by the cleansing of water by the word. It's an ongoing work. It's the church. So, Jesus Christ has not stopped building his church. He has built his church and he's building his church. He has not stopped. He has not given up. He has not given up. And he says, he has given a promise. He says, was, and the gates of it shall not work. Shall not prevail. Talk to me. Can I help you? Can I help you? Oh, I, will, I hope you won't misunderstand my statement. Okay, let, I'll say it in a good way that you won't misunderstand it. Without Jesus in your life, the gates of hell are not your mates. Are you following me? The gates of hell are not what? Your mates. The gates of hell are stronger than you. But Jesus Christ said that what? Even the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. So you with your coconut, with your small head, you think you can prevail against the church with your, with your, with your smartphone on, on Twitter and Facebook? You know what I'm saying at all? It says the gates of your, the very gates of your sophisticated gates. The gates that are, that are, that are even the one powering some of these social media stores. <laughs> Let me stop that one there. Amen. The very gates of hell says they can't prevail against the church. So you with your coconut head, with your small, small English, that still have sand inside. Your English is not, is not very correct. You think you, you can destroy the church on Facebook? Facebook. How many, people, how many people are on Facebook, then? You think, you think your word is on Facebook? Stressing yourself. Twitter. You think your word is on Twitter? You think your word is on Instagram? <laughs> so you think that by typing on Facebook, on social media, on Instagram, you, you, you can destroy the church. The gates of it that are everywhere at the same time, they can't destroy the church. <laughs> they can't destroy the church. Guys, you understand? You better be careful. You understand what I'm saying? The gates of it that are what? Everywhere. Everywhere, anywhere, this is as they are, they are beside you. As you are walking, gates of hell are walking with you. Are you following me? Ever present, ever strong. Jesus Christ said, What? They can't prevail against the church. You, with barrel and paper, you want to prevail. With your techno, that, 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 that the battery is not even very good, you want to prevail. Take note that you charge, 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 charge. You charge it for 16 hours. You use it for 30 minutes. It's off. <laughs> That's what you need to prevail against the church. <laughs> oh. You have not even prevail against your phone. <laughs> ah! Oh, the church is so powerful, man. These things have to humble our hearts. Let us stop this nonsense. Let's stop all this nonsense. Nothing can destroy the church. It's the church of Christ. And he says he will build his church. And this has to humble us. And it has to humble you too. And it has to also make you patient with yourself. Because you are the church. Be patient with yourself. Don't. How do I put this word? We are not condoning sin. Are you following me? And we are not gentle on sin. Are you following me? But when Jesus says, I will build my church. It's a continuous process. So can you, can you, can you still keep coming to church? Keep coming. Keep coming to church. I know you have struggles. I know. Don't let Satan lie to you that Jesus Christ cannot forgive you again. Don't let him lie to you that that is the end. That, ah, today again, I've, 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 
I've, I've, I've committed another abortion. That is the end for my life. God can forgive me again. It's not true. Concerning the judge, concerning the judge, Jesus Christ said what? I will build. I will, it's a continuous work. Concerning the judge, the Bible shows us that what? To cleanse our cleansing until she becomes glorious. Guys, your life can become glorious. Your life will become glorious. You just keep coming. Stop listening to it. Keep listening to the word. Keep subjecting yourself to the cleansing of the word. That's what Satan wants to steal from you. Satan doesn't want your life to be glorious. He doesn't want you to be cleansed. He doesn't want you to be purified. He doesn't want you to be holy and without blemish. And he knows that the only thing that can, that can bring about your cleansing is the word of God. And where you receive it is the local assembly. So he wants to separate you from the local assembly. So your life can end as a mystery. As a mystery, rather. Can end miserable. But that's not the plan of God for you. Guys, I will build my church. My church. So personal. Is the owner of the church. Is the owner of the church. The church is not what man's idea. It belongs to Jesus. You are the shepherd of my soul. We closed. Where you lead, I'll go. The master's voice I know. I'll continue in the evening. You are the owner of my life. Your, Your voice is all I need. You Just say the word to me. The shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my soul. Where you lead, I'll go. Where you lead, I'll the go. The master's voice I know. The master's voice I know. You are the owner, owner. You are the owner. Can you declare his ownership over your life? I've showed you ownership. Your voice is so powerful stuff. Just say the word to me. Oh, shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my soul. Where you lead, I'll go. Where you lead, I'll go. The master's voice I know. The master's voice I know. You are the owner of my life. You are the owner of my life. Can you just pray and talk to Jesus? Declare your voice is so Declare that you are aware that it owns your life. Just say the word. His ownership of your life is very, very powerful. Say, Shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my Where soul. Where you lead, I'll go. Where you lead, I'll the go. The master's voice, I know. The master's voice, I know. You are the owner of my life. Oh. You are the owner of my your life. Your voice is all the voice is all I need. Just say the word to me. Say the word to me. Shepherd, shepherd, shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my soul. Where you lead, I'll go. Where you lead, I'll go. The master's voice I know. The master's voice I know. You are the owner of you are the owner of my Your life. Voice is all Your I voice need. is all I Just need. Just say the word to Just me. Shepherd of my soul. Shepherd of my soul. Where you lead, I'll go. Where you lead, I'll go. The master's voice I know. The master's voice I know. You are the owner of my life. You are the owner of my Your life. Voice is all Your I voice need. is all I Just need. Say word Just me. say the word to me. Shepherd of my soul, where you lead, I'll go. go. The master's voice I know. You are the owner of my life. Your voice is all I need. Just say the word to me. Can you declare that, Lord, I, I recognize your ownership over my life. I acknowledge your ownership. It means a lot, my friends. Can you say, Lord, thank you for your ownership because you own me. You are the owner of my life. I acknowledge your ownership. I can't be destroyed. The gates of hell cannot prevail against me. I can't be destroyed. You are the owner of my life. You are the owner of my life. Can you declare his ownership? You own this life. You own this life. 
You own this life. O rada bobo bo shaka tala bala brother dije. Radi kondro troski di 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 jabala gombere tiska da ba ande. Jada boko tosi da bana mama mandejas. Di goduski di di ja prado do shambara diska daya. Shambara diska daya. You can't be destroyed, my friend. You are indestructible. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 